Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about AI chains, transparent and controllable human-AI interaction by chaining large-range model prompts. This work is done when I was an intern at Google Research with Michael Terry and Kerry Kai. Since 2020, our NLP community has deployed this so-called large-range models, and what's impressive about them is their ability to respond to arbitrary natural language prompts at runtime. For example, if I want to do English to French translation, I don't need to train a separate engine, but just fit the model something like, given the English sentence, translate to French, and then the English sentence, and then denote the starting point of French, then the model can just continue the prompt with the French translation. The users want to do more things than translation. Many of our, our users were Google employees, and they really wanted to use the same large range model for rewriting their short summaries into friendly and constructive peer review paragraphs. Their short summary might look like this. Sherry could improve her presentation skills. She, ha she has too much text on her slides. Her presentation meanders from topic to topic without a clear structure. She also does not engage with her audience when she presents. The model indeed can do the rewriting, and it generates something for them, but this generation doesn't really match with their expectation. Here you can clearly see this paragraph is still pretty mediocre. It still is mostly impersonal and does not really provide concrete suggestions. For example, it just says you should have a clear structure in response to without a clear structure. And if I got this feedback, I would be like, well, I still don't know what to do. Now, if you work on NLP, or more specifically, text generators, then you probably can guess what went wrong. Basically, there are some limitations in the modeling structure, and the model doesn't really know how to do reasoning. They start to get biased by their own generations as the text become longer, etc. If you don't work on this, don't worry, because end users also don't know what I'm talking about. But they're the user of these models, so we need to answer this question. How can we help end users interpret and improve model outputs when they don't understand the underlying structure and also cannot change the model? Our way of doing it is to build this kind of AI chains. Basically, we try to provide more explicit knobs to end users by breaking down an original task into subtasks. What's the intuition behind this? If we really think about many, many tasks similar to this rewriting, the problem from the end user point of view is because this task has a lot of things going on, it's hard to build an input to output mapping. It's not clear how they can help the model to know what presentation problems exist and brainstorm suggestions and also do the rewriting. But this mapping does exist if we make the task smaller and more targeted. So instead of rewriting a full paragraph, if we just ask for suggestions on a single problem of does not engage, then we can get very explicit suggestions like ask the audience questions or walk around the room. And then end users can come in and say, I don't want to have this because I cannot walk around the room during the pandemic. So I will keep iterating on it until I'm happy and maybe get things like use humor. And then if we pass this human fixed suggestion to another large language model that specifically focus on rewriting suggestion bullet points into friendly paragraphs, then we can get a better paragraph like here. You may want to ask more questions to engage the audience and humors always help. Packing them together, we have a chain. We ask large language models to com complete each subtasks separately and use the output of one step as the input for the next. So the final result will get to aggregate the results from previous runs. Our peer review rewriting task can be completed in three steps. We build an interface for users to actually play with the chain. Pretending you're the peer review writer now, here's how you're gonna use the chain. In the interface, we will use this visual flow to check the underlying structure of what large range model steps are involved and how the data are transformed. Getting into our first step, given the original feedback, we ask the model to split it into a list of separate presentation problems. The prompt is very similar to what we have seen before, um, though we make it to look more structured in the interface. Then we take this output problem list to the second step, and ask large language model to ideate suggestions per problem. 
So here we can run the model on too much text independent of other problems and get suggestions like use more graphics, refine them, and then when we are ready, we can move to the next problem of Minders from topic to topic. Then we use both the problems and the suggestions as the input in the third step to compose this final paragraph, so all of the results from previous runs get aggregated. And now this rewriting is much better. It now has praises like, oh, your presentation was so interesting, and also good suggestions like it might be helpful to vary picture with text, and if it were me, I would divide the sections. If you think about this, this is pretty nice. Arguably in, arguably, in all of these three parts, we're asking this nice large range model to do something simple. So in a way, we are repeatedly underutilizing what it can do. But just by doing this, the final result is also better. So this is saying that for these models, sometimes less is more. Through a user study comparing chaining to just a standard baseline without chaining, we see our users really like interacting with large range models through chaining. In particular, they find chaining makes their interaction with large range models more transparent because after the task decomposition, they are more aware of what the things the model can do. They also feel that interacting and changing the output of each step helps them to steer the system towards their final goal. One participant phrased it like this, and I really liked it, and is that chaining makes it easier to fine-tune things. Too much freedom without chaining as occurs. So chaining seems nice, but how can we decompose an overarching task such that each independent run of the model will be effective and can contribute to the final goal? We design a list of operations that can help better scope the subtask input and outputs when the original task is too, is too broad. And we demonstrate their usefulness on a wide range of use cases, including diversifying topics for language learning flashcards, handling rare data formats in visualization code debugging, and supporting branching logics in assisted text entry apps. And across these use create cases, we see that the concept of chaining raises the ceiling for what people can use large language models for, and our paper have all of the details, so please do read it. We also have a follow-up work on helping people to prototype AI-infused application with chaining. If you're interested in how a UX designer would build this music chatbot, please check out our late breaking work called Prompt Chainer, where we show how AI chains lower the floor for end users prototyping with large language models. As a recap, AI chain breaks down an original task into subtasks, and with this, we raise the ceiling of what humans can do together with large language models in a more transparent and controllable way. And we also lower the floor for end users playing with large language models. More importantly, we achieve all of these just through interaction design without having to change the model itself. Please check out our paper and our demo video for more details. Thank you.